Hey everybody, Jay Widener here. Um, reality check. Thanks for watching and all that. I'm going to be bringing you a little bit different thing here today. Um, I've got with me, uh, got it from a friend of mine here recently. He uh, comes from the writings of Pava Sambhava. Um, this is the prophecies of Pava Sambhava. Pava Sambhava was a um, Indian who uh, came to Tibet, brought Buddhism to Tibet, supposedly, in the 8th, ninth century, somewhere in that vein. And what he did, what he was famous for, was achieving light body. And so supposedly he went into a cave in the Himalayas and um, did light dark practice for like years. And uh, they call it meditation, but it's clear that he's using the cave, the darkness of the cave, uh, to achieve a high uh, hit of uh, melatonin and then going out to the mouth of the cave and getting hit by sunlight, which is converting the melatonin to serotonin. And eventually, because he did it so many times and just constantly doing it, uh, he eventually, the pineal gland eventually, you know, lit the whole body up and he turns into light. So the whole point of alchemy and um, the, the ancient uh, Tibetan bond traditions is that you do various forms or exercises that cause you to inhale light. And if you inhale enough light, you become a plasma being, an eternal plasma being with your thoughts and personality and all of that. And you can't do this if you're you know, a nasty person. So nasty people can't make it. So anyway, that's what Pava Sambhava was really known for. Now, he came from India, so he definitely had probably read all of the Vedic texts. And definitely this prophecy echoes the Vedic text. But it's still worth reading um, because it was, it's just so interesting. So I want to thank my friend Hana for uh, giving me this. It was very nice of her. And here we go. The let's see, Make sure I got this right. So this is the prophecies of Pavasambhava, 8th century. Here we go. As the age progresses towards the final conflagration, please note that he's saying there's going to be a, a conflagration, life expectancy decreases and the weight of darkness becomes more intense, though there remains restraints on the downward path when the Dharma is followed. Towards the end of the era, when there has been no respite in man's increasing egoism, these conditions will prevail. The celestial order disrupted, loosens plague, famine, and war to terrorize terrestrial life. This order becomes chaos and turning to panic, which rages like wildfire. The planets run wild and the stars fall out of their constellations. Great burning stars arise, bringing unprecedented disaster. No rains fall in season, but out of season. The valleys are flooded. Famine, frost, and hail govern many unproductive years. Earthquakes bring sudden floods while firestorms and tornadoes destroy cities in an instant. The knot in the silken thread keeping demonic forces in divine bondage is untied and the cord of faith keeping the human mind harmonious is severed. Imposters and frauds cheat the people and black specters Dark specters, we should say, dark specters haunt the land. Drunkards preach the path to salvation. The advice of sycophants is followed. Fraudulent teachers give false initiations. Guileful imposters claim psychic powers. Loquicity and eloquence passes wisdom. The arrogant elevate profanity. The proletariat rules the kingdom. The butcher and murderer become leaders of men. Unscrupulous self-seekers rise to high position. Embodiments of malice and selfishness become revered teachers. 
Men resort to maledictory enchantment, learning mantra for selfish ends. Many treacherous paths, previously unchartered, are followed. Many iniquitous practices spread. Behavior becomes tolerated, which was previously anathema. Ideals are established contrary to tradition, and all good customs and habits are rejected, and many despicable innovations corrupt. The belch of the black magician. resounds in the yogis, yogin's hermitage. Spirits of darkness, which had been controlled by ritual power, become unloosed and govern the mind of whatever being they possess. Spirits of vindictive power possess monks. Spirits of egotistic wickedness possess the practitioner, practitioners of the mantras. Spirits of disease possess the priest. Enchanting spirits cause disease causing disease, possess wantonness. No. Enchanting spirits, causing disease, possess men. Grasping, quarreling spirits, possess women. Spirits of wantonness, possess maidens. Spirits of depravity, possess nuns. Spirits of rebellion and malice, possess children. Every man, every woman and child in the land becomes possessed by uncontrollable forces of darkness. The signs of these times are new and fantastical modes of dressing, traditional styles forgotten. As the frenzy of malicious, selfish, vindictive, and ruthless spirits grows, paranoid rumor increases, and ornament and clothing fashions change more frequently. And that's the end of the fragment of the prophecies of uh, Pavas and Baba, but I think it's very interesting, and I think people... Um, you know, that he it predicted that. I mean, you know, just 60 years ago in this country, um, it was completely different. And um, and now it's changed so quickly, and I don't think anybody can take the change. And my theory is, is that they're throwing everything at us to make us crazy. Uh, and, and, and by going crazy, then we will... Um, do violence. And when we do the violence, then they can say, see, that's what they're like. And then they're going to call an end to the Constitution and begin, um, well, we'll lose the state's rights. And so we won't have any rights. And um, that will be the end. But uh, until then, uh, like he says, you can uh, do certain practices to stop all of this. I've all preached all the time that you can turn your own little place where you live into a little golden age in the middle of, of all of this. And I don't know if that's coming or we're in it or what, but I just thought I'd pass it on to you because I thought it was incredibly interesting. Anyway, that's it. Uh, Jay Widener, Reality Check. Thanks for watching.